You know we wear our best waterproof mascara when we watch this show. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 This Is Us moments that made us ugly cry. Yes, that's right, he loses her. And how's he punished? Well, he, he gets a sitcom and he makes millions, ladies and gentlemen. Before we begin, we publish new content every day. So be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. For this list, we're looking at the most devastating scenes the show has served up so far. We'll be discussing major plot elements of the show, so a spoiler warning is in effect. And I may even cry a little. <laughs> Number 10, The Martial Arts Class Randall Pearson's adoption experience is a storyline that runs throughout the show. When he's a child, Jack and Rebecca struggle to offer him the type of community he needs as two white parents. Hey, uh, can I help you with something? Yeah, I'm, I'm looking for Ray. Oh, yeah, that's me. Hey, Ray, I'm Jack. Uh, my friend Yvette told me I should come by. Oh, oh, yeah, she said she may be sending someone by. They sign him up for a martial arts class that's run by a black man because they've been told he needs black male role models. In this poignant scene, a class ritual calls upon Jack to do push-ups while Randall is on his back. When he can't do them any longer, Randall is carried in turn by the other men in the room in an important lesson about community, support, and accepting help when you need it. Number 9. Dr. K's Story We meet Dr. Katowski in the very first episode of This Is Us. At that time, though he makes a big impact, we don't know much about his life. It takes time, so. Yeah. You look thin. <laughs> Just old. Later in the first season, when the big day is revisited, we learn that Dr. K's wife passed away more than a year previously, and that he still hasn't come to terms with her death. Baby, I don't know if I can keep doing this without you anymore. And I, uh, I'm really not sure that I want to. Seeing him talk to her out loud is completely heartbreaking. And realizing that he kept all of her things completely intact since she died is even more so. Luckily, the Pearsons unwittingly gave him the push he needed to move on. I hope you know this. I hope this is what you would want me to do. Number 8. Kate's Miscarriage Throughout this entire episode, we know that Kate has lost the baby, so seeing her and Toby prepare to become parents is difficult to watch. Her refusal to grieve and Toby's efforts to avoid having that package be delivered are an interesting juxtaposition. But today, I am a man with a fiance who has had a terrible last 12 hours. Right now, she's somewhere in a red dress singing in the middle of the day because she can't face how awful she feels, and that breaks my heart, so I'm not feeling all that funny. When Rebecca arrives to offer her support, it's a bittersweet moment considering the conflict they've already had over Kate's pregnancy. Seeing Rebecca break down in a grocery store after her own loss puts it all into perspective, reminding us that people aren't always able to share their grief with family and friends, but that it's still very much there. I'm sorry if something happened. Number 7. The Funeral Okay, you know we're leading up to the big stuff here, and we'll of course be getting to the fire eventually, but the episode following Jack's death was almost just as heartbreaking. You want me to? Yeah, screw it. Not wearing a tie. I'm not gonna wear a tie to death, you know? You wouldn't care? The Pearsons are preparing for Jack's funeral, and simultaneously we see flashbacks to Jack buying the family Wagoneer years earlier. We also see Dr. K attempt to comfort Rebecca in another tough moment. We have to stop meeting under such dramatic circumstances. Yes, yes we do. Rebecca brings the kids to Jack's favorite tree after the funeral and makes a quiet pledge to her husband that they're all going to be okay. If you were able to get through this episode with dry eyes, we salute you. Number six, Kevin's Breakdown. This season two episode is all about Kevin and we get a lot of insight into how he became the person he is. That's my son. Pearson's about ready to release Seacox back. Boom! He's down, folks! We see the injury that effectively ended his football career and the tender moment with his father when Jack gave him his Vietnam pendant. 
In the present, Kevin is struggling with substance abuse and is on a bender when he makes an appearance at his old high school. <clears throat> we are all very proud. After having a one-night stand with an old classmate and misusing her prescription pad, he realizes that he left his pendant there and has a full breakdown on her front lawn when she won't let him back in to find it. It had nothing to do with you, all right? I'm in pain out here. It's heartbreaking. Number five, Rebecca and Jack losing the third baby. From the very first episode, we knew this show was going to yank at our heartstrings. We lost the third baby, Jack. I'm, I'm very sorry. We were already weeping for these characters we barely knew when Dr. K delivered the devastating news that Rebecca and Jack had lost the third triplet in childbirth. Explaining to him how you took the sourest lemon that life has to offer and turned it into something resembling lemonade. His speech about turning the sourest lemon into lemonade has become something of a cornerstone of the show. And Milo Ventimiglia's performance in that scene is simply outstanding. When Jack later has to deliver the news to Rebecca, the audience is devastated all over again. Number four, Kevin runs to Randall. From the outside, Randall has got his life together as an adult. He's got his big house and fancy car, and of course his incredible wife Beth and their two daughters. Internally though, he's just as much of a mess as his siblings, and we get to see the full breadth of his anxiety in this episode where he suffers from a breakdown. We've seen that Kevin and Randall's relationship can be a tenuous one, but in Randall's moment of need, Kevin is the one who realizes something is wrong and runs to be by his side. <sighs> Seeing Kevin put his brother's needs above his own is as heartwarming as Randall's breakdown is heartbreaking. Number three, William's death. Almost from the moment we meet William, we know our time together is limited. He states right out of the gate that he's dying. And as much as Randall and Beth try to help by seeking out the best doctors, ultimately there's nothing anyone can do to stop the inevitable. In this episode, Randall and William go to Memphis together, and we also get to see flashbacks to William's younger years and his own struggles with his mother's death. You're okay, Dad. <laughs> Seeing Randall call William dad in his dying moments is almost too much to watch. Beth's tribute in the following episode shows she can be just as vulnerable as her husband, even if she is the head. Number two, the fire montage. This was the episode that we were all anxiously waiting for, the one where we'd finally find out exactly what happened to tear the Pearson family apart. I love you. <laughs> Jack, be careful. The episode opens with a bang, with their family home already engulfed in flames. You can't help but be on the edge of your seat, even though you know how it turns out. I think I hear I think I can get to him. Get down here! No, Jack! Jack, don't go back inside! Go back to the street! Go back to no, the street Jack, right now! Get down here. Seeing Jack get his whole family to safety feels like a huge relief. Until you realize, wait, isn't he not supposed to make it out alive? When he runs back in to get the family dog and keepsakes, we all held our collective breath only to see him confusingly come back out safely again. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Randall, you have to understand. Understand what, that you knew my father? That you kept him from me my entire life? Don't you ever get tired of pretending like you ain't playing flat out scared? I've been pretending my whole life, man. I don't know any other way. Now, Randall. Where it is. Number one, Jack's death. What else could our number one moment be? <clears throat> you must really love that dog. You really love the girl that loves the dog. We find out partway through season one that Jack had died years earlier, but that didn't make it any easier when it finally was revealed. The creators of the show took an interesting approach, not letting Jack go out in a literal blaze of glory, but rather in a quiet moment in a hospital room when no one saw it coming. Your husband went into cardiac arrest. It was catastrophic, and I am afraid we've lost him. This shocking turn of events meant that we were surprised, even though we knew it had to happen. Seeing it all through Rebecca's eyes, and then watching as she completely broke down, was almost too much to handle. We were right there with her. 
Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from Ms. Mojo and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.